Uh, scientists in, in Davis are doing some incredible work with chickpeas to make them more nutritious and delicious. Hey, listen, if they can improve them, I'm all for it. <laughs> Cody's Caravan is live ah. at the lab this morning to show me why I may have to eat my words one day <laughs> and apologize to the humble chickpea. Today's the day. That's right, John. That is why we're here today. We're here to change your mind about the chickpea. I love chickpeas. Same. I love them. I cook them all the time. They are amazing. You know who also loves chickpeas? George Clooney. George Clooney loves chickpeas. <laughs> well, now I'm in. Really? You remember that episode of Friends? God bless a chickpea. <laughs> yes. See? God bless the chickpea. Yes. God bless the chickpea. Uh, this is Catherine Cook, uh, New Cider. This is the company. And Cider, you yeah. guys, New Cider, I'm sorry. Um, uh, you guys are on the cutting edge of chickpea research and, and production. We are. We are. We are unlocking the full potential of chickpea. Mm -hmm. Uh, and really bringing back natural wild variation that was left behind literally thousands of years ago when chickpea was originally domesticated. Mm. Um, we're working to essentially supercharge the crop, uh, bringing in more protein, more fiber, you know, making the plants taller, more disease tolerant through natural breeding technologies, um, and really working to improve flavor and texture profiles to convince people who uh, might be on the fence to incorporate them more into their diet and to their products. You, you can just say John. That's John. fine. Okay. You, yeah, you can just say John's <laughs> name. It's fine. We, we know who we're talking about here. Uh, this is kind of a, a family journey with your family. It is. It is. Um, so New Sicer is a UC Davis spin out. Mm. Um, and I founded the company with my dad, Professor Douglas Cook uh -huh. uh, at UC Davis. There's Probably a ton of people right there would, oh, wait, I took one of his classes. Uh, probably, <laughs> yes, yes. He has been a professor for over 30 years, uh, working to understand the genetic controls behind key legume traits like mm. nitrogen fixation. And he shifted his entire research focus over to chickpeas about 15 years ago when he realized that not many people were focusing on the crop globally mm. and it's such an important source of human nutrition in you know from our ancestors and and even in places today around the world india several regions in africa the middle east you know it's it's a very important crop um, and we have to be continuing to to breed and develop it to be, you know, really climate resilient and nutrient dense for the future. Yeah, uh, I think the reason why my wife, who's a vegetarian, I moved her to Indianapolis mm. when we first got married. She almost starved to death, and the chickpea saved her life. It saved her life. We, the Midwest, we they're save... meat eaters. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> well, I think that we can convince. I think we convince a lot of people. A lot of people love chickpea already, but what we're doing is taking what's a good crop today and making it really a great crop. Okay. Um, a lot of a lot of breeding, when, when we think of the ag, agriculture side of our, our food and ag system, a lot of breeding focuses on the grower, which is foundational. You have to have that. You have to have you know, strong yields. You need to have, you know, be resilient against some of the disease and climate pressures that we're seeing. But at the end of the day, if there's not a downstream demand, consumers like you and me and, and John, and John. Um, <laughs> working to you know, really incorporate this into our diet, Thinking about the food formulators at, at food brands and, and big manufacturing companies incorporating these ingredients, the growers don't have incentive to grow it, right. to right. rotate with it. We don't get the benefit of that nitrogen fixation in the soils. So that's why we're focusing not just on grower traits, but we're focusing on flavor, nutritional profile, how we can really unlock formulation flexibility. Fantastic. Fantastic. We're going to learn all about what they're doing out here. They're using some incredible science and AI and, and all sorts of stuff. It's, it's really interesting. The chickpea. John, by the end of the day, you will love this. You will <laughs> love it, my friend. Um, I, listen, I told you I like hummus. It's just the actual texture of mm -hmm. the chickpea itself. But if they can fix that, then they, I'm on board. Tell me, they're doing the work. Yep. Okay. okay. Ah, thanks, Coach. We'll keep working on you. Thank we'll you. break you down. All right. Uh, he is a man of science. And this morning, we are getting a closer look at how chickpeas are getting a bit of an upgrade. Yeah. Well, they need one. Uh, so let's check back with Cody in the caravan, hanging out in Davis this morning with science. He's still hating, Cody.
Catherine, he's still bagging on the chickpea. <laughs> he's still bagging on the chickpea. Come on, John. Come, Come on. on. Okay, so we're what we're we're in a breeding field, right? Correct. Yeah. Breeding field, and so we're seeing different heights. Yes. And we're seeing all sorts of different types of chickpeas right here. Yep. But you guys are working on, there's a couple different things you're trying to do. Mm -hmm. So you want the perfect chickpea, but you also have to have a plant that can be harvested. Correct. So it needs to be lifted up a little bit. Correct, correct. So what we're trying to do is we're trying to uh, improve the plant architecture. We're trying to improve the uh, yield of the chickpea so that we have um, a more profitable chickpea for the farmer, but we're also concerned about the ingredients traits down the line so that we can make a better pasta, we can make a more nutritious uh, Dorito chip, all of the tasty things that we like to eat, but having a more uh, sustainable agricultural system. Now, the, the chickpea plant, I realized when I came out here, I did not know what a chickpea plant looked like and, and how it grows. I honestly thought it was a tree because uh, I'm a dummy. So can you show us some pods and can yeah, I explain what's sure. going on? For sure. We have uh, here, we'll have uh, the plant. Obviously, we have a nice uh, architecture, nice leaf system. We'll see some of the purple flowers here. And so what this flower will do, will actually uh, pollinate itself and end up with one of these little tiny pods. Uh, almost like you'd see from a, a field pea or a green pea. And this, this pod will then uh, fill and will have the nice seeds that will then you're used to seeing in a can of chickpeas. Mm. So we can pop this open. They're all still very ju juvenile yet, but they're um, little tiny little embryos that will form seeds that will eventually uh, be on your dinner plate. So interesting. Yes, so yeah. interesting. The chickpea plant, where does it like to grow? What, what, is it, what, what makes it the most happy? Uh, it usually likes to have a nice sandy soil. Um, so one of the wonderful things about um, chickpeas is that they fix their own nitrogen. So it can be a low nutrient soil uh, with um, sandy, sandy soils where there's not a lot of nutrients in it. Uh, the chickpea has a great root system that will go down and reach really far into the soil for water. Um, and from there, you know, a cooler climate. So we can grow them here in California all the way up into Canada. Mm. So, yeah, they're uh, very versatile in the sense of the environments that they'll handle. And also they'll grow into regions where we don't see a lot of nutrients, uh, which makes them quite unique and I think good for the agricultural systems that we're hoping to go into. And as things get drier, yes. and as the earth gets a little bit drier and mm -hmm. stuff like this, this plant could be it could be very popular. Yeah, very yeah. popular. Yeah, I think just the fact that it is so versatile. It will grow with cold weather, it'll grow in warm weathers. It uh, really is adaptable to climate. And I think that's really unique about the new Sicer varieties is that we've taken a lot of these uh, traits that came from the wild and are getting them to adapt into the more modern varieties that you see here. So really it is going to make it a very uh, sustainable and climate resilient crop moving into the future. That's very important. That's very important. Okay, coming up in the next segment, we're going to talk about some of the technology they're, they're using, and then we're going to talk about the Emily that they're using. Uh, there, there's Emily, and she uh, goes through and she crosses these things, and, and she was telling me all about it, and she could do a whole TED Talk on it. It is amazing, and she's going to help us out. That's all coming up. Back to you guys in the studio here. I hope you're learning about the chickpea. This plant is very important. I'm a huge very fan. Very important. We're still working on John. Listen, I like things made with chickpeas. Okay. I just don't like the chickpea mm -hmm. itself. Are we going to gloss over uh, Cody's bandana tied around his neck? You know what? Yeah, I, I was just trying a little something. No, it works for you. Just trying a little something. I hadn't got it until you said something. Yeah. It You're works right. for him. It and is. For it's me, working. For me, it would totally stick out. Like, what is right. he doing? But for Cody, it works. It's working. It works. All right. Good job, <laughs> Thanks, Cody. Well, some people can't get enough of chickpeas, and some are still fighting it. Uh, there's a local company who is changing the way they grow from a little help from science. Listen, th it sounds like I'm an I'm all for this. Yeah. Because I feel chickpeas need improvement, and these people are doing it. <laughs> Check back in with Cody Stark, who's in Davis this morning. Hey, Cody. John, you're insulting Emily's work. Emily works so hard. She uses little tweezers to do her job to make those chickpeas better. Okay, Emily, so um, uh, you and I were talking. So you really have to, the flower on this plant is a perfect flower, so it's got male and female in it, which okay. means the plant will just keep replicating itself, but you're trying to make new varieties, so how do you do it? Right, yes, yeah, so these are traditional breeding techniques where we are taking pollen from one flower and putting it into another flower. Um, and so chickpeas are selfers, which means that in normal circumstances, the pollen is going to just pollinate the same flower that it's in. Um, and to get around that, I have to actually get in here, 
before the flower has opened up and do a process called emasculation, um, <laughs> where I remove I'm all the it. male parts <laughs> of the flower. And so I go in, <laughs> this is a little small, <laughs> and remove all the pollen, uh, which is the male part of the flower, but leave the female parts in here. It's amazing. My, Sorry, my co-host Courtney would really like for you to do that on the set. If you could take the, the John out of the set, that would be so much better for all of us. <laughs> a little emasculation on set? Yeah, yeah a little bit. <laughs> I could do that. It's um, so tiny. Uh -huh. And so then you would pull a flower from a different plant that has a different trait that we're interested in. So say we have one plant that has big pods and another that has high protein. And so we want to combine those traits. And so we take the pollen from a flower from one of those other plants. And then transfer it over. And just very delicately get the pollen out and put it, just put the pollen right into the flower. And John. that'll create a single seed. A single a seed. John, just for you, just for you. So we showed you that, that's just tweezers. And then we have this brand new technology. You guys are using AI and you're using drones uh, to correct. work out here? Yeah, correct. So what you'll see now is uh, Juvenal, who's our breeding lead. He's flying over our plots and we'll take images that will be extracting information about every single variety and every single plot that's in the field. We stitch these together and we get um, three-dimensional images of the plant during its entire life cycle. So we'll be pulling out things like plant height, the number of flowers, when those flowers occur, and leveraging all that information to see that the work that Emily's done has been successful and we've got a new variety that we think we can go commercial with. Fascinating! Okay, so we're going to talk about the last step of this in the next hour about where this is going and the products that will come out of these uh, beautiful chickpea plants. John, I hope you, you're, you're finding new love for the chickpea. Uh, There's so listen, many people doing so many different things. Listen, first mm -hmm. of all, I feel like uh, people have made it sound like I dislike chickpeas. I like stuff made with chickpeas. These people are making them better. Mm. <laughs> it's, it's We're on the same page here. We're on the same page. All I'm hearing is boop, 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 <laughs> boop. John's backup noise. No. Because no. he's been called out. No, that's not true. But thank you, Kelly. I appreciate it. <laughs> Some scientists in Davis are doing some incredible work with chickpeas to make them more nutritious and delicious. So Cody's Caravan uh, is live at the lab this morning to show me why I must eat my words and apologize to the <laughs> humble chickpea. So we've been out in the field, this, yeah. this field right here of our lovely chickpeas. We uh, we've learned all about how the process works, how you, you cross and then you, you grow these plants and you try and you get them out there and now you're growing the things. But I wanna know about the final end of the process because there's one more step to this. Yes, exactly. So once we've developed the variety that we're looking for with the yield and the protein content and the flavor profile that meet our requirements, we then have to think about how it's used as an ingredient mm. in the food that we're actually eating. Um, so last year we actually launched commercially our first high protein chickpea variety. Uh, it has up to 75% more protein than a normal chickpea wow. off the shelf. Okay. Okay. And it visually looks very different mm -hmm. than a normal chickpea. Um, once you dehole it, just like you would remove the, uh, the, the fiber on a, on a wheat kernel before you mill it, you remove the seed coat on a chickpea. Um, and that naked chickpea, if you will, uh, is deholed, looks just like any other chickpea. You can then mill it into a flour or extract a protein from it and make a really delicious fortified pasta, snack food, cookie, baked, baked food. Um, and the emulsification, the gelation, the foaming capacity of these high protein chickpea ingredients can create a lot of formulation flexibility for food brands. Okay. And that's really what we're, what we're, who we're working with today, uh, launching new products that are fortified with improved chickpea ingredients. The, the chickpea is such a fascinating plant. Thank you so much for, I learned so much today about chickpeas. And now I understand that this plant really, as, as the earth is heating up, this plant does kind of well with those kind of situations. So the fact that we could take that plant that does well in a drier, sandier soil yeah. and make food products out of it that are high in protein yeah. could be a difference maker. This is, you know, our, we ultimately founded the company with a focus on climate and human health. Mm. Uh, and, you know, it stays core to our culture and our value at New Sicer. 
Um, and I, I think we're super excited, not just with the commodity or commercial variety that we've launched, but with the next generation varieties that you all got a quick look at in the fields earlier today. That is fascinating. Okay, I want people to learn more about your company and what you guys are doing in the future, or what you guys, what, how do they get, uh, you know, what do they need to do? Uh, visit our website, newsicer.com. Check us out on LinkedIn as well. Um, there's a form for you to reach out and happy to talk with you whether you know, you're growing chickpeas, you want to just learn more about the crop or the ingredients that we're developing, would love to connect. Excellent, excellent. Yeah. Thanks for having us out. Yeah, I, honestly, I learned a lot today. I thank learned you. a lot, and hopefully you did too. We need to learn more about where our food comes from and where our food is going. We really do. All right, back to you guys in the studio. Thank you, Code. Thank you, Code.